Army came out, dial it free. You know, uh, when um, Egypt came out with yes, 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 you know, all that bit. And they was doing their thing. They During my time from 77 to 1985, when I left, the game had changed big time. We gave two dances at the sports arena. The first one, if you ask me, it should be in a Guinness Book of World Records when it comes to one night for a couple of hours and you have over 10,000 people on the dance floor. Right now, we are about to do a photo shoot here at the one, the only, where we made history, Uncle Jam's Army, that is, with 10,000 people on the dance floor. LA Sports Arena. They're getting ready to tear this bad boy down, so we got to come up here and take some photo because it is history. <laughs> Hey, hey! What's going on, I'm man? Good, man. I'm man. I'm Yo, everybody, this check man. this out, man. See, this is a man I haven't seen since in the '80s. All right, Ooh. it's been a long time. Let me. I'm about to take it way back. It's super exclusive. <laughs> this man right here is one of my first all-time like role models. Y'all don't understand in terms of everything I've done in hip hop. It started out with me idolizing this brother right here. This is one of our security guards that been to all our dances. My man Lamont, tell him about Roger and how we was doing it at Uncle Jam's Oh Army. man, the first time ever a black man ever came and sold the sports arena out on a dance. So Uncle Jam Army just took over. I always buy down this brother right here. First generation Uncle Jam's Army, second generation Uncle Jam's Army. We even got three generations of Uncle Jam's Army. That's DJ, right. That's right. biggest party promoters in the history of the world. America, y'all don't know, worldwide. Now at around this time, we had new recruits coming left and right. The new ones were Silky D, DJ Kit Kat of the Cali Cat Crew, Greg Bruchard, the Egyptian Lover. People would come yeah. from as far as the UK to see Egypt. Yeah. Trust, trust me on that one. DJ Bobcat and DJ Battlecat. Bobcat said, let's start another crew called the California Cat Chief. So it was me, him, and we got Battle Cat. We was going around, people was knowing our name. Then we go to Reseda. We had Wild Cat, Scratch Cat. It was just all kind of cats start popping up, and California Cat Crew was out. You know what was so unique about all the different DJs? We wasn't allowed to play the same records, and we had to have a unique style. We couldn't copy each other's exact same style. The big one was when all the local promoters, Z Car, uh, Disco Construction. LSD. Disco Construction. LSD. 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 Right. It's somebody else, though. It's y'all. Y'all. And us. You need to do one check. Okay. All right, right. <laughs> we all got together as young black men. Right. Young black men. And agreed on something, and it was successful. We'll just try but but wait, 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 Reverend, because I was oh. helping collect money at the door. Okay. And then all of a sudden, I remember at the uh, LA Convention Center, the, the marshal was there. Okay. And the marshal was talking about, we're going to shut it down. And I kind of, you know, was air hustling. I heard him talking about, we got to shut it down. At that point, we went to the lines, and it's like, come on in. Whatever you got in your hands is good. <laughs> you know Thanks to uh, Jordan Clayton for those of us uh, borrow houses all those Roger's years. Roger's father. <laughs> Roger would start charging the quarter to get in. Yeah. OK. <laughs> we live in that neighborhood, too. Right. So uh, I started hanging out with Roger on 17, 34 years. You knew him before that. Yeah. yeah. Charles is always there. You know. I'm always right here, man. This is doing a new project. What well, got to the top was, we started doing our own radio takes on the radio for our, for our dancers in our own voice for background music. That was unique. Nobody else, nobody else was doing that. So now we're on the radio doing flyers and posters. All of a sudden, boom, one day, we go to Alpine Village. Once that, we uh, maxed that place out, that's all she wrote. We leveraged in with $2,500. Oh, and it was a union house. <laughs> it was a union house, so we paid a lot on the back end. But well, we leveraged in here because they were having so many problems. And we had, a, we had to have a bigger place. It was the perfect marriage, man. Wasn't it? Mm -hmm. It was the perfect marriage. I mean, Long Beach really said, we like you guys. We just can't have you guys care. Yeah, we got to bring it back. same thing. We did uh, Apple Business, Long Beach State. We did Sports Arena. We did Pasadena Civic. Daryl Pierce. Call me Big Dad, L.A. Posse. Started with Uncle Jam's Army. <laughs> learned the art of uh, street promotion. Uh, Work for me. Pro probably more than anything. That's what we all learned was you know, street promotion. I'm surprised, you know, ain't no flyers and cars out today. today. <laughs> Just pulling it all together with Gibb and, and Roger and... We knew uh, it was going to hit the minute 
Just like when we got the name Uncle Jim Jones, we knew it was going to be a hit. One of our key elements is that me and Dwayne, so, partner so, Dwayne Simon, we were the first ones to go to New York and actually you know, get signed to a Def Jam Records with an artist we had by the name of Breeze. So we helped bridge that gap between East Coast and West Coast music. But it all started with an idea and no knowledge of how to do it. We taught ourselves through failure. I group allegiance to the flag of Unique Dreams Entertainment and Uncle Jam's Army. Yeah. And to the republic for which it stands, we are one nation under a group, indivisible with the liberty to funk for all. God bless Chocolate City and its vanilla suburb.